Yo, what's up guys? This is the long-awaited movement guide. A lot of you have been asking for it, so here it is. It's going to be absolutely everything I've learned over the past three seasons of doing movement. We're going to start off with the basics and move on to the more advanced lurches and strafes, and then we're going to end it off with some zipline tech. Uh, quick note, I don't use configs, macros, or scripts of any kind. There will be an input overlay for you guys to better understand what I'm doing, but I'll try my best to explain. There's also going to be timestamps in the video, so skip along to wherever you'd like. Please like the video, and subscribe for more movement. Alright, to start this off, quickly I'm going to go through some of my keybinds. I recommend you copy, scroll wheel up for W, scroll wheel down for jump, and a E close to your spacebar, like C, V, or B. Uh, I use C for super gliding. Alright, the first thing I'm going to get into is basic tap strafing. You're going to start off by doing a simple slide jump, and then you're going to want to hold a directional key, like A or D. While in the air, you're going to let go of W, hold A or D, and while scrolling, you're going to look in that direction. So if I'm going to, I'm going to tap strafe left, I'm going to hold A, scroll up, and look in that direction. So it's going to look like that. You're going to go right, do the same thing. Uh, you can do this at 90 degrees, you know, 180. You can chain it together with B-hops. I'll get into that later. This is really the most basic mechanic for movement, and it's one of the fundamentals. So you're going to want to learn this for sure. All right, next thing we're going to get into is wall bounces. Wall bounces are super easy. All you have to do is just slide into the wall and jump. Usually I use scroll wheel because it's instant. So as soon as I make contact with the wall, I'm bouncing off of it. I use spacebar. It's a little bit more delayed. I don't have the timing down that well. Another thing to note is if you're trying to wall bounce off of a low structure like this, and you go at it like a normal wall bounce, you're going to you're gonna climb it because it's too low. So if I try to wall bounce off of this right here, normal wall bounce, it's fine. So with something like this, you're going to want to hold a or D and let go of, make sure you let go of W. So if I hold D, I can now wall bounce off of it like a low structure. Hold A, that works. But if not, obviously you climb it. You can also implement tap strafing into your wall bounces. So after I jump off the wall, I'm going to hold A and then look left and tap strafe. Just like that. Super simple. If you're going the other way, you can do it by holding D. Another thing is you can skip the climb animation. So like that, you know, climbing, it's pretty slow. You tap strafe, you just tap strafe right over the wall. It's really helpful in gunfights. Obviously, you know, you're getting shot in the back, you're trying to run. Boom. Gone. They're stuck chasing you. you gotta climb the wall. You tap straight right over. Alright, so next up is jump fatigue wall bounces. These are like normal wall bounces, except you implement jump fatigue. What jump fatigue is, is basically after your first jump, every jump after that is going to be fatigue. So for a jump fatigue wall bounce, you jump once, go up to the wall like normal, and bounce off of it. So you just jump once and then go for a normal wall bounce. You can do this with W by initiating the climb a little bit and then jumping, or you can do what I do is I use A or D. Seems the most consistent. So you don't have to let go. You can keep doing it. With W, if you hold W, you're gonna keep climbing it, and it's gonna be awkward. Like that. But if you use A or D, it doesn't matter when you let go. So you cannot mess it up. So after a jump fatigue wall bounce, you're going to have jump fatigue again, as you can see. So you can infinitely chain these for as long as you want. And then you can also tap strafe out of them. You can use it to skip climb animations like last time. You have to be careful though, because your jump fatigue will run out. So as you can see, Jump fatigue, I wait a little bit, and it's gone. 
So if you wait too long after jumping, you won't be able to do a jump with two ball bounce. It's about two seconds after you jump, you can run to the wall and then do it. You wait too long though, one, two, three, gone. One, two, still have it. Another thing to note is jump with two wall bounces go higher than normal wall bounces. We could check out here. About there, without moving my mouse, I'm gonna do another wall bounce. So as you can see, the jump with went a lot higher. All right, next up are coyote wall bounces. So after you fall off of a structure, you have a slight window to jump even though you're not on it. So as you can see, I was kind of in the air when I jumped there. And that's what the coyote frames are. I'm not exactly sure how they work or why they're in the game, but all I know is you can wall bounce after you do one of those. So you don't have to slide into the, the structure, you don't have to fatigue bounce, all you have to do is jump after you've fallen off that certain threshold and then you can do a wall bounce out of it. That's a coyote wall bounce. All right, next up are U bounces. U bounces are basically when you start at a, a higher point and your character starts to fall and you climb back up and wall bounce out of it. So you go in a U shape. Like so. The keybinds are pretty simple for this. So once you're on the wall and you start to fall, you're going to hold W and D to climb back up. Or if you're going this way, you're going to hold A and W to climb back up, and then you're just going to you're going to hop off the wall. So the most useful part of this tech is being able to super glide into a U bounce. So that's one of the most useful ways to use this tech is to super glide into a U bounce. Now I know we haven't covered super gliding just yet, but that's what we're gonna get into now. All right, next up is super gliding. A super glide is when you're at the top of your climb and you input a crouch and jump button at the same time. Real quick, before we get started, my key binds for this are spacebar and C, so I can hit them at the exact same time with my thumb. I also physically flip my C key upside down on my keyboard. I think that makes it easier because it makes the like the bottom of the C key closer to the top of the space bar so you can hit them at the exact same time better. So how I learned to do it is at the top of the climb, when you see that little shake, after that shake has gone away, that's when I like to input my space bar and C. You can also super glide directionally. So normally you would hold W and you would just go forward. But for a directional glide, once you climb, you're gonna wanna let go of W mid climb like that and hold your A or D and then input your space bar crouch. And then you can also tap strafe out of every single type of super glide. So you can go diagonal like that and then you can tap strafe normally. So you would scroll up and hold A, tap strafe that way. You can do a full, you can do a full like 180. So that was a diagonal 180. You can also do like directional backwards like that. That's basically just the same thing. You like hold S and tap strafe at the same time. On stuff like this, where it's kind of like a low super glide, something like you're gonna be super gliding off a death box maybe. Ramparts in here, ramparts in here. What the fuck? <laughs> what did you super glide off of? <laughs> the box. Yeah. Oh. Your screen doesn't really shake. So you don't get that indicator on how to super glide, you know, time it right, like you do with this one. So I've found that you really just have to practice a lot. And it will just come naturally. You'll, you'll learn the natural timing on, um, on exactly how to input your spacebar and crouch at the proper timing. And that is super gliding. All right, next up is bee hopping. 
Uh, all you're going to want to do is just slide jump, and then hold crouch and keep jumping. And while you're jumping, you're going to hold A or D. It's going to look something like this. And while you're B-hopping, you can chain it with tap strafing. Pretty simple. Another thing, if you're to heal and B-hop, it'll kind of fizzle out with other legends. When you're Octane and you stim, you can go basically full speed, full healing. It's go time! Charging up my shields. Really helpful in fights. Alright, I'm gonna go over lurching really quickly. Uh, lurches are basically just using your movement keys in a certain pattern to achieve like a redirect midair. It's kind of like tap strafing, except you're not only just looking where you want to go. You just press like say WASD. I'll go in like a an L pattern, like a hook kind of, and then I'll tap strafe while doing that. As you can see. So I went left, and then I slid out of it, and then I went DSA for another backwards lurch. So that's lurches. You can um, you can do all kinds of them. That's kind of a little circular one. Um, there's like forward and back. It's also really helpful in a gunfight. So say you're standing completely still. If you lurch around, you can slide out of it. That's gonna be really unpredictable. You're opponent's not going to expect you to instantly slide after standing still. Then you can, you know, chain other lurches. Uh, that's what's known as raz strafing. So this next section, I know it's going to be pretty hard to follow along. Um, it really takes a lot of practice to get this down, but you're just going to want to try to implement the lurches in between your b-hops and to not lose momentum you don't want to do too many lurches in a certain time span so say i do a lurch here i'm going to want to like put a b-hop in between before i do another lurch um unless you have enough momentum of course i know it's going to be pretty tricky so just try to follow along with the input overlay and uh, hopefully you guys can get it this is pedo strafing There's a whole bunch of different names for all like the different rasters, but it's essentially just combining lurches while b-hopping. Because every time you leave the ground for a b-hop, you can implement another lurch. You can also do a pattern kind of like this. It's basically just, you have to get the timing down really, really well. It's all about timing. Um, once you get lurches down, you really just have to play around with it. Um, that was kind of like an ASD pattern. So these are where the config accusations come in for me. Everyone thinks that when I'm doing raz strafing and I'm chaining all these different types of lurches after b-hops, that I'm neo strafing. Oh, that's not the case. That's what everyone thinks is neo strafing. That is not neo strafing. That's simply just chaining lurches in a circular motion. But yeah, the sky's the limit with with uh, with raz strafing and lurches. Um, I don't really know how I'm gonna explain the inputs to you. You really just have to get a feel for how and when to implement your lurches into your b hops. It definitely helps with an octane stim, so you don't lose your momentum. And it's also really helpful to super glide into it to get more momentum. You can also shoot while doing this. So with my grip, I'm shooting with my pointer finger. I'm scrolling with my middle finger and I'm aiming with my ring finger. So 
So you can chain patterns just like normal. But as you're doing it, you can shoot. All right, now we're gonna cover some zipline tech. Before you're gonna to wanna to learn any of the zipline movement, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to do a super jump. Uh, super jump is super easy. It's just after you interact with the zipline, you're gonna to wanna to jump twice. Really easy if you have scroll wheel bound, so you just interact and scroll down. Then you can tap strafe out of this. Yeah, super easy, that's a super jump. All right, next up, I'm gonna show mantle jumps. So for a mantle jump, you're going to want to press spacebar off the zip line while holding W to climb the ledge. So you're going to want to let go of W after you see the top of the floor and press S to cancel the mantle. And then after that, you're going to want to look down and interact like that. But after you interact, you're going to instantly pull down for your super jump. So that's mantle jumping. Once again, just jump off, hold W, cancel the mantle with S, look down, super jump. Alright, now that you know mantle canceling for mantle jumps, you can do it anywhere on the floors. So, say I'm going to super jump to this, climb this, then cancel, and then super jump again. You can also zip dance with this. So zip dancing is basically just canceling the mantle over and over and over. So what you're going to do is just like normal. You're going to climb. And then cancel your mantle. And then keep, keep interacting. Like so. So climb. Climb, cancel, look up, and interact. That's it. That is zip dancing. Alright, this is probably my favorite zipline tech. Uh, it's called ghost jumping. So as you can see, when you're in front of the zipline and you jump, there's a small window where you can interact with the zipline and ride it. Now with ghost jumping, what you're going to do is basically when you're in front of the zip line, you just want to hold E and scroll down. Uh, this works with wall bounces, so you can wall bounce in front of the zip line while holding E and scrolling down. It'll send you send you out. Like so. This also works great with zip dancing. So I'm going to do a normal zip dance. Crouch off, interact, and then jump off. And then after I jump off, I'm going to look down and do a ghost jump. You can also wall bounce out of these. You can also just chain them infinitely. Yeah, that's ghost jumping. Alright, to finish this up, I'm gonna go over mag leaping. Now, mag leaping is basically just a heightened jump, and it's pretty useless. To do it, all you have to do is walk forward, jump, let go of W, and hold S, and while you're holding S, you just scroll up. Uh, it can only be done while you're looking, like, in this, like, next to the zip line. I'm not exactly sure how it works or why it's a thing, but it's pretty useless. Alright, that is going to be the end of the movement guide. I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something. I'm kind of bad at explaining things, so I hope you guys got the gist of what I was trying to say. I tried to make it as short and simple as possible, you know, getting straight to the point. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.